Hey guys, Blackbart here. I'm bringing to you another comparison video for the some of the new and old uh, gameplay from uh, ARPGs in that genre and kind of letting uh, some Lance Ekbok run in the background here, trying to give them a little help on their Kickstarter because they do have a lot of potential. Let me let me preface this by saying that uh, I'm not supporting them over any others. Uh, they just have a lot of potential, so I'm letting their stuff run in the background. It's kind of new to look at it too. So cool. Let's move on with this uh, comparison video. All right, now one of the most important things in a freaking ARPG game is how they handle the attribute system and the passive system. And I say this with that much enthusiasm because it really determines whether or not a game is going to last longer than 10 minutes. So you may have that initial burst of people, but then after maybe a week, maybe two weeks, you'll see a massive drop off if that's not locked down and solid. Um, I'm going to start off, I'm just going to do these in order. So we're going to start from D2. D2 had a very basic system. Obviously, it was kind of one of the more origin style parts of this game, this genre that were done a few years back before a lot of uh, people really got into this, this uh, gameplay style. Um, the passive tree is... Uh, uh, there's really no passive tree all they had was the attribute system the attribute system was terrible um, it was really only get as much strength to wear your late game gear as you needed and then the rest into a main stat like intelligence for a caster other than that there was no thinking there was no planning there was no difference between anybody's build and it just it was very weak I, again a product of 15 years ago in gameplay and we've grown since then uh, moving on to Diablo 3, uh, there was no attribute system and there were no passives. So they got rid of all of the customization. Bad. Again, one of the reasons why it doesn't have as much replayability as other games and they struggled quite a bit with that. And it also uh, fights making custom characters where your character doing Whirlwind is different from another character doing Whirlwind. They're all the same. All right, let's move on to some of the newer games that have come out since those. Path of Exile has a very in-depth passive tree, okay? You start out picking a class. It puts you in a section of a huge grid of passives. Um, I don't necessarily think that this is the best way of moving about that, but it does give you a lot of customization on how to make your character if you need to make a player for a, a character for a hardcore league and you're you have to build into more health than other things then that's the perfect way of doing it not just through gear it's it's pretty good it can as a caveat of being as large as it is and not um cone down to where you can only see a small amount of it when you're actually building that first class uh can scare people away especially from the diablo uh franchise because there's not as much um customization within there and that really scares people um once you get into it it's really not that bad and you can move on and build classes there's a ton of resources as well on uh, YouTube, etc., on Twitch, uh, to be able to help people build um, something that's halfway reminiscent of a decent <laughs> build. But uh, there are inherent problems. The Ascension system also comes in there and adds to more customization, which I definitely enjoy. Um, I like that there's differences between subclasses, um, which is awesome. Um, Moving on to Grim Dawn, there are, they have the same attribute system from D2, which is bad. I already discussed that, where you put stats in under Cunning, Physique, and uh, Intellect. I don't remember the exact name. Uh, I'll probably just put a little thing up there. Uh, anyway, it, it's just not very good. You have to have a certain amount of strength or whatever to wear a certain gear, and it really hampers customization. Uh, I don't like the system at all. All right, the passive uh, side of the skill tree, I would consider the devotion style uh, where you can actually unlock points going to shrines and then put them into a passive skill tree to kind of customize your character. Unfortunately, I think that there's too much in this system that is very basic and doesn't really lead to night and day differences between classes or uh, which points you invest in. So 
Uh, they do have the little caveat of having, uh, when you finish the, uh, some of the constellations that you finish, um, have an additional like attribute you can add onto a skill, which is kind of like a rune in other games. Um, but it just doesn't feel very smooth, and it's it just it doesn't work for me. Personal opinion, but doesn't work for me at all. All right, now getting into uh, some of the, the two of the newer games, you have, uh, we'll start with uh, Lords of Mayhem because I have a bit more experience with that. The passive tree um, is more, so it's in between, <laughs> it's kind of the happy ground between um, Path of Exile's very massive thing with all of the classes on there and uh, not having it at all. Uh, you do not have a class in the world of... Uh, in uh, excuse my slip there uh lords of mayhem you build out from the center you move out the skill tree uh in any direction or multiple directions that you would like and then as you get to the next ring within their passive skill tree you can literally take any one of those five and just turn it i, I want a tank to go together with a two-hand build rip turn it it's a very unique way of looking at this passive skill tree and and initially i was a little skeptical about it but after actually playing i mean i literally have over 300 hours in testing on it it is extremely awesome and it's really good for those who do theory crafting and try to push builds to their absolute maximum combining different classes uh, not just one or two which is awesome uh, they also tackle the attribute system in a much different way than other games have, uh, where they combine four different uh, attributes for each stat. So every one of the stats that they have between ferocity, which is equivalent to strength, is going to be your melee damage, it's your attack speed, it gets into some of your... Uh, uh, crit damage for both spells and uh, regular uh, attacks as well which is where things get interesting now when you move down to agility uh, your normal crit stat um, applies to both spells and melee which makes it to where you have to build a complete build around these numbers here there are diminishing returns on things like intellect, on spell damage, so you, you have to put points into agility and into ferocity in order to get the maximum amount of damage that you possibly could, which makes it much more interesting than just throwing in the minimal amount of strength and however much uh, spell power. So I, I think it's, it's a step definitely in the correct direction. Moving on to the last uh, member of this group, which is going to be Last Epoch. Their passive system is very odd. I'll say that right here. It's actually showing right now. Um, <laughs> and I'll post a picture after this. But uh, basically, you have four different directions that your, um, your stat can go in, in four different directions that they've uh, selected what actually goes into that. Uh, they have different styles some of them just have strength and damage other ones have uh, health and uh, regen and it, it depends on what the class is but they move out in four different directions from there it basically creates this blob that it shows in the middle very technical term blob um, and anything that the blob touches activates those passive skills um, I find that this actually really, really hurts the customization of the classes that they've done pretty well with, with the active skills, which we'll get into later, but uh, it, it really hurts that customization feel and it kind of pigeonholes you into having to put stats in certain places just in order to unlock these passive skills. Um, and it doesn't feel good, very honestly. Um, I have been racking my brain to try to figure out a way to make it better, and I, I, I haven't come up with anything yet. If I do, I'll make a video specifically around that, but anywho, uh, not to be too critical of that system, but I know it's a system that a lot of people have had issues with, and I, 
I just have to join in, unfortunately. Now we're going to get into the active skills to, to complement those passive skills. Uh, Diablo 2, since you have a class structure, has a set amount of um, skills that you can use. Um, they have their own trees that go with them where you put things together. Again, a very basic system that MMOs have used and pretty much every... <laughs> it's the basic uh, active skill tree um it's it's effective but it doesn't really lead to much customization uh, it, it feels lacking for t by today's standards okay um it's still effective it's just lacking all right diablo 3 you have your active skills that you unlock over the course of your uh, leveling experience uh, which is great and they brought in the rune system which is terrific uh it's not all the way flushed out in this in Diablo 3, but it is much better than what we had before. You can literally just pick a rune to go onto a skill and literally change exactly what it does. So I can take Whirlwind, make it really tiny, make uh, tornadoes come out of my butt. I can uh, make it huge and out of fire and change the type of damage. It's a really cool system. And that was the most exciting part of Diablo 3 when it came out for me. Uh, unfortunately... There's only six, five, or six options. So you run out of that customization ability pretty quickly. Plus, there are also some clear favorites. Uh, not a lot of balancing between the six of them, or five or six of them. Ah. Anyhow, moving on, we're going to go into Path of Exile. Path of Exile's active skill tree, or active uh, skills, are amazing. You have access to every skill in the game every skill in the game so you can put together whatever the hell you want which is terrific and then on top of that you have the gems that you actually suck it into your gear to supplement those and do the changes that the rune system from diablo 3 was doing except for the fact that you can put together up to well with uh shaper gear up to eight um uh, different attributes that you can add on to an item which is awesome so you, you can literally fine-tune it exactly where you want it to be and it's great it also gives you that added benefit of having different more different gear to grind and it, it replayability is amazing on that you can also switch them out if you needed to change them you didn't like what was going on you didn't like the interaction and it's a very well thought out system that is extremely effective I, I can't say enough about the system. It's really good. All right. Now, Grim Dawn took a different approach. They went with the Diablo 2 style of active skills. So you have an active skill tree uh, where you put points into something and you can add other things in with it. Um, and then you have the caveat of being able to combine two different classes. Um, the problem that I see with this system, again... Much like Diablo 2, it's a very basic system. It's a very basic system, excuse me. It also does not really lead to much customization because there are some very clear favorites where things combine. So there are things that synergize together and it makes it almost worthless to go with anything else. So it's really rough for me to enjoy uh, that active skill tree. The other problem with that setup is that you are stuck in the beginning of the game with one skill, maybe two, and usually it's an aura. So it is really lame gameplay. Then that is a problem for me. You need to have, by today's standards, you need to have at least two, three skills to be able to use to keep your, to, to keep interest. We'll put it that way. So uh, a one button build is just, ugh. It, it, by today's standards, it is not fun. Now, some people enjoy that, but I get bored extremely fast with one button builds. Anywho, uh, unfortunately, Grim Dawn's system only makes that the first 25 levels is one skill, uh, which really turns me, turns me in, a, in a bad direction. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, uh, Lords of Mayhem with this one. Uh, their active skill system is basically uh, an extension of Diablo's uh, Diablo 3's skill system, where you have runes to go along with an item. 
The difference being there are no classes in the system, so you can have every single skill aside from some of the ones that are in the passive tree, okay? Unless you're specced into that. So the majority of the skills in the game you can have access to on every character, uh, which is cool. That's good. Then they take that and those skills level up. When those skills level up, they uh, gain damage, and every five levels they actually gain a rune. And so you get a you get a pick between two different runes at each five levels. So you, you can actually you have ten different options on each skill uh, to be able to pick. So and you don't have to pick any of them. You don't like the two options, you don't even have to pick one. Um, it's a decent system, and until the one after this game, the last epoch, I was going to say that that was the best because, or maybe not quite as good as Path of Exile, but pretty darn good. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, well, or fortunately, the uh, the next group here, uh, last epoch, have come up with what is the, the the best out of all of these. They have each active skill has its own skill tree so as you level it up you pick which direction it goes in each one is customized they have four or five different directions to move in it is extremely well thought out at least in the skills that we've seen so far and this is a game that's not even being produced really yet it's been a year of people are really enjoy making it <laughs> Um, doing it off of, of nothing uh, prior. So they're going through Kickstarter now to, to make it happen, and they already have this thought. This thing is amazing. It leads to exactly what you want in the skills. The only difference that I would say, the only thing that I think I would add to it is some kind of inc small incremental change in damage as it levels up so that you don't have to pick damage over utility. Like, not even not utility, but changing the way that the skill reacts as opposed to just, there's a couple of the nodes that are just flat damage. And it doesn't feel good to pick just a flat damage um, as opposed to it just kind of incrementally getting um, a little bit, not much, but a little bit more damage to be able to keep up with the content. Because there are certain skills like uh, the hammers that uh, just feel really bad because they don't scale and damage very well. And if you don't, unless you put all the points into damage, and then you don't get a very cool looking spell. Um, otherwise, if you get a cool looking spell, you don't have the damage to go along with it. Again, a system that's still very, very early in production, but it is really awesome to see the skill trees for every active skill. Uh, the only other problem I would say is that because there's class systems, uh, you're stuck using the skills specific to that class. Um, and I'm okay with that. Um, I think it it uh, leads to more replayability, um, but whichever system seems to work there. Um, so overall, I think that's terrific. I think definitely in the active skill tree section, you have a clear favorite for me personally is Last Epoch, one of the new, new guys on the street. And then you have uh, Lords of Mayhem, again, one of the new uh, heavy hitters. And then you have, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Path of Exile's in there too. You, you, I kind of kind of group them all together. Those three are very clear favorites, and it really comes down to whoever uh, personal uh, there. And I think there's a very clear that the three on the bottom is D2, D3, and Grim Dawn. But again, all personal opinion. All right, well, my name is again Black Bart TX. You guys come in, see me on Twitch, come in, catch another couple videos here. I appreciate just you guys watching. Um, and definitely, if you have any comments, any concerns, drop them down in these comments here. Uh, I'd be happy to answer uh, some of the questions that you guys bring up. Or if there was something I didn't cover or was wrong, let me know. Um, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye.